And I'll tell you something. Probably some of you get in the morning, God will never warn you no more. Mercy. Some of you are dying in your sleep and you won't Mercy. wake up till you be in hell. Mercy. Hey, people dying every day. The doctors can't find a thing wrong with them. Amen. You ain't got to be sick to die. Oh, I'm for well. I don't care what you are. You, you ain't got to be sick. God said if I take your breath away, you'll die. Amen. And that's what God's going to do. There's at least seven or eight people in this place. You're on the balances. You cannot play church folks. And you cannot once know the truth and then walk away from it and start doing your little doings. Too many people like that now in church, especially in what we call when I was growing up holiness. Now we don't hear that much. No. 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 But it's still holiness without which no man shall see the Lord in peace. Still holiness without. No man shall see the Lord and I added to peace. Call him old preacher said, You'll never see God in peace that I raised up under unless you submit yourself and become holy unto God. This is what I do. Give your soul to God. Give your body to God. Reach your hearts, not your garments. Humble yourself. There ain't, ain't nothing out there. Man, here I am. Standing here, I've got 19 Martin guitars. And I wouldn't sell them or nothing. People give them to me. The opera gives them to me. People from, from the place above where they make them, they send them to me sometimes. <laughs> Called calling me, bought people, bought them, and anybody else. And I'm here ready to step on the stage of the Grand Ole Opry to join that. A voice spoke to me. I read up turned 19, but I was in that age. Said, go to church right now and get saved. If you do what you're fixing to do, you're going to burn in hell. And for 30 seconds or a moment, I went to hell. And that opera suit turned to solid sweat. When I come out of hell, I walked out of there. They tried to get me not to. I went straight. I didn't know who or where. I saw a Baptist church. But this time it was 8, 30 or 9 o'clock. And that Baptist church was standing about right back there. That, giving an altar call. He, I guess it was in a revival or something. I don't know. And I stopped and I stood in that door. And I heard him say, Oh, that awful, awful hell. You don't want to go there. If you don't want to go to that awful, awful hell, come and give me your hand. I went right down there then and gave him my hand. And he put me right over here on this side. And God saved my soul that night. I've never looked back. Oh, I've been on the Grand Opera stage two or three times since, but they got me to come in to sing gospel, and they didn't make me stay with them. They let me come in and do it and leave. But not for sure. God don't want us to think we're better than people. He wants us on the streets to be, to be Christians, but don't act like we're better than sinners. God wants us to realize there's people out there that we need to be kind to and show them love and compassion no matter what kind of character they got they need us and people out there in the world they don't want to go through these Christians that think they saved God they want somebody that's got a broken spirit you know a broken spirit I said a broken spirit you hear me my wife has got one of the sweetest testimonies. She was at the crossroads of her life. And God come to her in the spirit. She was a good girl, but she was, it was either make a decision, go this way or that way. And she started crying. 
And somebody, she went, just looked in her phone book and found a preacher, didn't know who he was. A Baptist preacher went and he prayed with her. Prayed with her all day long, nearly to the evening. Said, I know I got to go, but she gave her heart to God. Thank the Lord. Just shortly after that, I met her. She told me that story. I thought, Jesus, if I can get this woman in my life, she'll go to heaven with me. We'll fly together. One time I had a vision, Jesus, come, we were flying to heaven. Man, alive, we went through uh, such beautiful, then one up there's a big black cloud. We went through that so dark. On the other side was the world. We come through that cloud. There was another world out there in such city. Boy, we were flying when I come out. I thought, oh, God, I miss it again. <laughs> Three times I had experience. I went to heaven like that. Once I did make it there. And I got there. There was a man working on mansions. And, and the streets was gold. And, and he was outside putting up final works on the windows of these beautiful mansions. I looked at him and he looked at me and it was Jesus. And he was there on a little high stool and he looked at me. He said, I'm Jesus. He said, I want you to go back to the earth. And you preach to, to my people all over the world and tell them that I've gone to prepare a place and in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not su truth, true, I would have told you. said, so go tell them what you saw. God's got a mansion for you. God's got a, a mansion for you. Jesus is, and I believe he's still preparing the mansions. 2,000 years he's building mansions. Heaven ain't going to be to some blah, blah. It's, a, it's another world. It's a new heavens. It's a new earth. And God is separating the sheep from the goats. When we step at that door, the goats will go into one part of the world, which is hell, and we'll go into heaven. Hallelujah. I said Hallelujah. Oh, don't go to hell. Don't go to hell. Hallelujah. I've done seen. I've done looked in people's caskets that told me I'm going out to have one more time, one more uh, Saturday night, but they didn't make it. I've stood at the bedside of and caskets of people. I've stood at the bedside of people screaming. Oh, that awful hell holding their hands trying. Mm -hmm. I spent my life since I was 19 years old. Started in a, a worldwide ministry when I was early in my 20s. And time I was 26 years old, had the biggest tent that's ever been built three times in the world. They want me all over the world. You know why? They don't want me over there to start religions. They want me to come and talk about what I'm talking about. How these preachers go over and try to put on all this psychology and theology. We don't need that. We need the Lord Jesus Christ. All this other stuff won't save us. All this big time and these parties and these churches are having parties. Now they got picture shows in the churches. Now they got ball games. Now they got games. You know it's a truth. Now these churches are playing religion. They're not taking folks to hell. You can't have it. You either got to come out of the world or go to hell. You can't have the world and, and heaven too. It's either come out or go to hell. It's a self-denial. Mom used to tell us kid, Mom was a devout Christian from the time she was 13. She told us boys, there's six of us, seven of us. Well, my dad had a son before he married my mom. He's married before, which was seven sons, actually, because he was daddy of all of us. My mom told me, she said, son, hell ain't worth all those boys. Hell ain't worth burning forever and ever. Mamas ain't telling their kids about hell no more. Back when I was a little bit of school I got, the school teachers read the Bible to you and prayed in school. Now Obama and the rest of these proclaiming, I think, started the whole devil mess, getting Bibles out of school. But both of them are going to be burning in hell one day. Wish they left the Bibles in school. You know it's the truth. Some of you, you went to school the other day. They read the Bible to you and they prayed with you. Now it's against our law. You can't do it. They will turn you out of church. They will They'll turn you out of, out of school. They will discharge you from school. You can't take a Bible into school no more. Let's get saved, people. Somebody in this building is fixing to go to hell. And I'll guarantee you, I won't get home 
if you don't. I got to be in Brownwood, Texas Saturday of next week. Wake up! Wake up! Let go! She ain't worth it! Lust ain't worth it! Sleeping with a man ain't your husband or with a woman ain't your wife! Smoking cigarettes! Drinking beer! Cussing! Ain't worth it! You say, what are you talking about? Bob said, if you defile this body with these things, I'll destroy you. This, you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. You don't belong to yourself. God said, you're not your own. You were bought with a Christ. And if you want, you were bought by Jesus. And if you go to hell, you're an intruder. It ain't worth it. And I've had hundreds over the years. I met them missionary trips. I met them Latin America. I met them in Africa. Men that was in these services come up to me and see me and recognize me. Bombay and other places said, thank you, Brother Terrell. You don't know it. I was in one of your services and got saved. Because where well, you preach, hell ain't worth it. I believe it'd be good if all of us come down to this altar. Amen. Then, no, then somebody wouldn't feel ashamed either. Come down and get on your knees and let's pray. pray come down and get on your knees and let's pray. Right. God, we wash your sins away. God, we wash your sins away. Yes. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. But if you've ever prayed, if you've ever prayed, pray. Yes. If you've ever prayed, pray. Yes. If you've ever prayed, pray. Yes. Lay your lives down. Lay your lives down. I said, lay your lives down. Lay your lives down, folks. Lay your lives down. It ain't worth it. Oh, Jesus, God, we fall upon our knees upon the altars tonight, Lord. God, we give you everything tonight. 